Hello, and welcome to another Greylog video. In this video, we're going to talk about system monitoring. System monitoring is monitoring your system after it's been installed, looking for different bottlenecks or issues that may arise, ideas about what to monitor, how to monitor them, and different types of notifications. So let's start off with what to monitor and what, how should we monitor it. There's really three sections that we need to monitor. One is the system itself, which is the operating system that it rides on. This could be a Linux distribution or a Mac distribution. The other side is going to be the network side of it. This is going to how we're going to detect if there's any issues sending in logs, things through UDP packets. How do you know if some of those are getting dropped? And the component monitoring, which is probably the largest section, which is how do we monitor Greylog and its components around there? What kind of metrics can we pull from there? So let's get into system monitoring. So system monitoring up front, like I mentioned, is going to be around the operating system. So a few things you want to look for. You want to look for CPU utilization. You can look at those on a per process basis and just an overall CPU utilization. But you want to keep track of that so you'll know when it's spiking out. If it does hit a high CPU mark, obviously everything's going to slow down. Processing the logs will slow down. The web interface will slow down. Memory is the second one. Memory, obviously, is very key to Java. You have the Java heap stack that you want to keep. Make sure that there's plenty of memory for that. Uh, as well as just system memory in general. You have to have the operating system doing its functions, the web server doing its function, and the processing of the logs through gray log process. So usually memory, you want to keep an eye on that when it gets around the 80% mark. You want to make sure that you're expanding your resources if possible, um, as well as getting alerts on that so you know when you could possibly have a slowdown or an issue there. Disk utilization, just like any log management system, this is probably one of the things that fill up the fastest. As we collect those logs in, you know, we're doing the parsing and the enriching of the logs, but then we have to write them to disk. And Greylog does that two different spots. Right? One is going to be the elastic search index. So as you get your logs in, we index those and put them down, and we keep those for a retention period. And then we have the long-term archives. Those long-term archives are compressed and down to about 90% usually ratio, and that's moved off, but you can store those on a slower medium. But we do want to keep track of that in case our normal 30 days of space is using more than normal and we're filling up all of our solid state drives. And then the last one there really is the JVM status. We want to make sure that the, you know, the Java systems themselves, we can look at and see if any CPU utilization issues, any memory issues, maybe if it's having a memory leak or just the status itself, uh, bottlenecks within the apps, or even just kind of want to monitor the time it's spent tracking a single process. Now all that you can do through command line tools, Doing, using a top or a, a DF, like a disk free, um, or you can use some commercialized tools. Um, none of them that we recommend particularly, but some ideas are Zabbix and Nagios. You can put those agents there and keep track of those. Um, another good one's Datadog. So all those we can gather that metric data, pull it in and keep it an alert on it. Keep a graph of it and also create an alert on it as it might go over. So that's around the system monitoring. The network monitoring is really the second one. So a lot of our protocols you know, rely on UDP to bring in those logs. We want to make sure that we somehow can monitor those and keep track of them. The first command there you can see underneath protocol usage is, is netstat us. If you do use that, what you're going to see is a bunch of different fields um, in there about how many packets have been received, how many packets have been delayed, any packet errors that you're collecting. And it's the same way with TCP. So if you use those, you can start to detect if your, your system can't keep up grabbing logs and pulling them in fast enough. So you'll want to take that, and you can graph that out over time as well. If you use a tool um, such as, a, again, like a Datadog or Nagios, you can use those tools to graph those performance stats and keep track as if you're having any network latency issues. The other side that you might want to monitor inside of the network monitoring is, is the TLS sessions. A lot of the agents now with the beats and the NXLog can use TLS, as well as the components between things like Greylog and Elasticsearch can use TLS as well. And if you can keep track of that, just to make sure that the, the SSL handshakes are going smoothly and that there's no issues around the decryption protocols. But that's really the network monitoring inside. Now, com component, getting into the component monitoring, there's really three main ones. Obviously, there's MongoDB, uh, Elasticsearch, and Greylog. MongoDB, again, is where we keep our configuration data. So it's any of the licensing issues, any of the, the roles and permissions inside of the product. There's a couple commands that we recommend just to, to use and then understand kind of how your load is on your system. Uh, the first one there is the MongoStat. 
that just talks about how many operations are happening per second and kind of the distribution if you have more than one box and how they're going to each table. So it's a good way to see kind of what's the load, what's the status of my of my Mongo distribution. And then Mongo top is just like the Linux top. It's, it's understanding kind of how much write and read access you're having on your database. Um, and each one of those is on a, on a per database node. So that way you can see kind of the overall usage of MongoDB. Now this really should never run into an issue, but there are a couple commands just to monitor them. Uh, the second one there, Elasticsearch, is probably the more key one of the two. Um, this one here, I, I did try to put a command down there. Um, it's the curl, the cluster, the health. And then you can put that in a pretty format. And I have a little example over there on the right side. But what you can see is when you do this cluster health status, But what you can see is when you do this cluster health status is that you want to look for the second line there. It says status is green. If a status is red or yellow, then you have an issue with Elasticsearch. Maybe you're having unassigned shards or you just have that the process has stopped in general. So when you look down below the next line there, I have an unassigned shards, a quick link to this. There's a great article out there on Datadog on how to understand Elastic, or uh, I'm sorry, unassigned shards as well as how to fix that in Elasticsearch. So always keep, in, always keep track of when your status is outside of green. And when it does, we want to make sure that we address that as fast as possible. If you don't address this as fast as possible, then it's going to have trouble inserting new logs, indexing that, rotating them around as retention times expire. All right. On to the gray log side of this as well. Is we can pull, gray log is a fully API based system. All of our metrics are exposed through our API, so we can pull those off very easily. Um, I did give an example curl command up top there. Um, you do have to provide a username and password of a user that does have access to these metrics. Just keep that in mind. Um, most common, most administrator users would have this. You can also create your own uh, through the, the permission side of the house. But then you could have a user that can query these. And here I, I assumed the IP was on local host. And then you go through the API and the system and the metrics. And then down below where the, all these additional metrics are, you'd put that in place of that metric field. But the different things you should really want to monitor, it's the internal log messages is the first one. This is really going to help you det uh, detect if there's going to be a problem. Uh, and here, Graylog is exposing the internal log messages themselves, you know, the different things that we write about our own process. And we're broken it down by log level. So you see trace all the way down to fatal. And we can do this on, a, on 1 and 5 and 15 minute increments. So you can start keeping trends in time of how many errors are you getting every minute or every five minutes. And then if you see this trending up, there's probably a problem inside of Graylog itself. But a really good way just to keep track of all these, put them on a graph through one of those monitoring tools, and then you can quickly see when you're starting to get more problems. Um, the filter execution times. This one's great to understand if you have if you put in more regex in there or different grok patterns and you're trying to understand is any of these slowing down my system. This filter execution time itself can be monitored. It, it does look for different performance hits that have happened. Um, sometimes, again, like I said, you put that regular expression in there, it's really crashing around the CPU, or maybe it just never actually finishes itself. Uh, but with this, you can monitor that and get an alert right away when that happens. The next side really here is going to be the buffers themselves. So these buffers are understanding where logs are coming in and, and where they're going out. So if you look at these, there's really three sections. One is the input, the output, and the processing. So the input side of this, um, you, you can do the size of the buffer, which is the, the size, all three of those, is how big is the buffer itself, and the usage is where it's at inside of that size. So it's going to be a smaller unit. Maybe it's not used at all, or it's very small used, or it's completely full. Uh, but the input buffer itself is how fast can I accept those logs in and write it to this buffer before we start processing them. Uh, there's the output buffers when we take those logs and write them to Elasticsearch or write them off to a syslog sender. And the processing side is when I get those logs on the input and I want to process them, I want to do that regex, I want to do the data enrichment, threat intelligence lookups. That's where that uh, processing buffer is going to be. But really good metrics to keep track of so that way you know if you're getting any buildup of logs uh, as well as any slowness as far as processing those logs going. And then the last one there is the journal size. So if we're Familiar with Graylog, we have a, a journal. By default, it's a five gig journal that will spool all the logs to. So outside of the buffer, the buffer itself writes that to disk. 
on a, on a set increment, and that's where, where the journal's at. So there's a whole bunch of those um, different metrics there that we can detect ar around the journal size. You know, how many are we pending on a one second rate? This is great to look for um, if you're seeing for like really fast increases of the journal, which probably means something processing wise is broken. Um, you can also look for uncommitted entries. You know, this one itself is saying that we're uh, not being able to write those disks, uh, write the logs to the disk itself, you know, process them down. You know, the, so if you look through all those there, I won't go through each one, but you can look at those and keep track of those and graph those over time. But really it's understanding how Greylog is parsing, processing, and storing them. These metrics will then show you if anything's building up from kind of from the input side to the processing to the, to the output to where we're writing it to Elasticsearch. Um, and if any one of those main components are down, you'll start seeing cues in this journal. It'll keep growing over time. I wanted to give you guys a quick short demo of a couple other features inside the console. It didn't make sense to put on those slides. So the first one underneath here, we're going to go underneath the systems menu and look at the overview. It's a nice quick GUI representation of what to look for. You can see there's no notifications there. You can also look for the different Elasticsearch clusters. Remember that one where I saying look for yellow green. Here you can see that it's in green. And then quickly any indexing failures. This would be if, if can I get, grab any logs and write them to disk if I'm having any issues doing that. Um, the other side here is going to be around nodes. You can see I have one node up front. You can see the JVM usage. You can see how much of that heap's getting used. You'll notice that this will bounce left to right as the normal Java cleanup process happens. But inside of here, you can look at other things. You can see those input buffers, which those metrics were, but here's a visual representation of that. You can see if any buffer's getting full, as well as the heap usage. And then up very top, you can see that everything's running, everything's marked alive inside of there. If I click on any one of those metrics, you can see those metrics themselves coming in. Here, you can see how fast am I getting incoming messages. I have a mean of about 3.29 events per second. And then my input size and my usage. So this was that first buffer before it gets wrote to the journal if needed. I'm using zero of my 65 megs. And we have, uh, again, all three of those metrics buffers for the processing and the output, as well as then you can see down below, there's the API address if you're ever in question of what to put on that command line, as well as up in the actions, there is that API browser. And you can go to the API browser itself and look through all the different APIs that we have. So here's a huge long list. I did give you some of those up front, uh, but I wanted to show you them otherwise. I want to go over a couple other items here, the resources where I pulled this information from. Uh, the first one there is our Greylog monitoring blog. It's a good article. It has a lot of those same metric fields that I was showing on the dashboard that you can pull, as well as kind of the description of what they're for. And then the disk journal monitoring. This was another community blog article that we had out there of different things to look at, different items to pull. Um, a great community that we have out there. Always make sure you go check that out. And thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps. And as always, happy logging.